Hi, my name's Paul Taylor, I'm English. Et ça fait 9 ans que je vis ici en France et que je me moque de vous et de vos stéréotypes sur scène et à la télé. Et vous n'avez pas arrêté de me dire, bah Paul, pourquoi tu nous laisses pas tranquille et t'essayes pas de faire la même chose avec d'autres pays Great idea Sauf qu'avant de me moquer d'un pays et de ses habitants, il faut d'abord que je comprenne leur culture. Et quoi de mieux que de commencer par leurs stéréotypes Donc, je vais voyager dans différents pays européens pour mieux apprendre à les connaître. Mais au lieu de 9 ans, cette fois, je n'ai qu'une semaine. So let's go I'm taking you on a stereo trip. After five other episodes in five other countries, it's now time for me to make fun of my own country stereotypes. But before we do that, I've got a little confession to make. Because I've been living in France for nine years, I feel a little less British than I used to. So before coming here, I decided to take a British citizenship test. Fuck me. The British citizenship test. British citizenship is a fucking cunt bag. British citizen. Welcome to vlog 100. I took the British citizenship test for my YouTube channel and here's what happened. Are you ready? For the results. Oh, fuck! I failed the test. It means I have to take this British passport and fucking rip it up. Clearly, I don't know my country as well as I thought, so I asked you on social media to help me out with the stereotypes. So go crazy, go wild, don't be so racist, okay? And you didn't let me down, people. In fact, most of your comments were hilarious. Here are your top five. Number one, the English are all way too polite. Number two, the English are all obsessed with the royal family. Number three, English food is disgusting. Ugh. Number four, English music is the best in the world. And number five, if it's not tea time, it's beer o'clock. So there you have it. And in order to help me on my mission, here are the three experts that are helping me throughout the documentary. Patrick, who's a historian, Lisa, who's a sociologist, and my good friend Ian, who's a comedian. Hi, I'm Ian Moore, I'm an English stand-up comedian, and Paul, you're a twat. Whoa, 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 Ian, you're being really rude. I thought English people were supposed to be polite, and in order to find out why, I'm off to learn how to say hello. Welcome to my hometown of Canterbury. Now, we couldn't talk about English food being disgusting without me showing you the food that I grew up with, so I thought it would be a good idea to pay my mum a visit. She just lives here. She doesn't know that we're coming, so let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, my God, Harry and Judy. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? How are you doing? Yeah, good, how are you? <laughs> oh, God. Right, so mother, we're here to talk about food in England, so I thought I'd come and see you and, uh, well, we'd find out, first of all, what you've got in your kitchen. Uh, so, we've got, well, cheddar, clearly we've got some cheddar over here. Uh, we've got butter, grapes, grapes is good. You've got a baguette. Is this what you call a baguette, Mum? You should have brought some over from France, because the baguettes here are... I can kill absolute. someone with this, check this out. <laughs> Third stereotype is that English food is shit, is terrible. <laughs> There is a lot of really bad food in England. I mean, I think, I think you have to say that's true, you know. We've all had so much bad food in this country. Mm. So we, we, we know the joke's justified. Oh, classic jelly, look at that. I think English food is misunderstood. And I think that other countries in Europe totally misunderstand it. Marmite, classic Marmite. Look at that beautiful brown shit. <laughs> what are you doing? They have got to taste Marmite. Have a bit. Hello? That's okay. Very good. Oh, he likes it. He's being polite. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I came, honestly, is because I wanted you to cook me the dish that I loved growing up. 
Cheesy tuna fish pasta. Cheesy tuna fish pasta. OK. Right, good. Let's do this. Now, this takes two minutes to make. It takes two minutes to make, yeah. That's why I made it for you. That's why you made it for me. Tiger telly. <laughs> There's a different attitude to food in England than you have in France. In the UK, food is just fuel. Oh, you're putting boiling water in? Yeah. Why? Because it makes it even faster than two minutes. <laughs> Like when I was growing up, you would say of a good meal, well, that filled a hole. <laughs> and, that, and that was how you regarded food. Where's the cheese? The cheese is over here. No, I think you have to be brought up and learning how to cook. Right. My mum never taught me how to cook. OK. Ever. So then you never taught me how to cook? No. Can you give me some milk? Some milk? Yeah. There must be English people in this country that can cook. Have you met anyone, any English people that can cook? <sighs> no. <laughs> we have lost, in a sense, a tradition of how to eat in the home. It's only a minority of households that do that anymore. I think we have this kind of Protestant Northern Europe work ethic that if you spend any time over the meal that you shouldn't be spending, you're not working hard enough. It's just not important to us. Yes, mate. Taste it and tell me what you think. You're burning that now. Oh, get out of this kitchen. Would anyone else like a little bowl? Alex. <laughs> oh, poor Alex. Mum, when will this torture end? I have to admit, though, cheesy tuna pasta isn't exactly English cuisine. If you were to name typical English food dishes, what are they, Mum? Indian. <laughs> what else? Kebabs. Fuck it now. Yep. It's said the most popular dish in England now is chicken tikka masala. Wait, what? The most popular food is Indian food? Is our traditional food really that awful? Well, let me say bye to my mum first and we'll find out. You've got to see some other people. I'll see you. I love you too. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. So I'm back up here in London to try some proper English food. I didn't want to be a tourist and go to a pub, so I've come to a proper pie and mash shop. The pie mash is a very London thing. You wouldn't see it anywhere else. Right, OK. And if you were to describe it to people who have never tasted it before? It's a puddingy bottom, okay. a crusty top, mint meat with mashed potatoes and parsley sauce. Tourists come to London yeah. and want to eat English food. They go to a random pub yeah. and I think they go back and they go, this is shit. Well, that's the thing. The pub food is generally pretty rotten. <laughs> anyway, there's no fish and chips here, just pie and mash, but they also serve an interesting side dish which you have to try, jellied eels. <laughs> oh, don't throw up on me just yet, because this speciality has been feeding the East End of London for generations and generations. Time to dig in. Now, to French people, they'll be looking at this and be going, oh, my God, this is a, just a mess on a plate. It just looks like a pile of stuff mixed yeah, together. Yeah, and it, and it is. It looks as if it's already been eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Who would traditionally eat pie and mash? Some of them that will just finish a night shift. The traditional black cabbie, and then you get the builders through the lunchtime period. So it's quite a working class, proper yeah, yeah, East End yeah. working class. You know, the Industrial Revolution started here. Yeah. People that worked in the docks, worked down the mines. And what do they need? They need carbs big chunks of meat. So I don't think our food is bad. Right. I think it's kept the English nation going. All right, yeah. so the jelly deals. Oh, oh, let's see what it goes. Have a... Have a... Have a... Have a... <laughs> <laughs> David Beckham eats two pies, two mash and the jelly deals. Yeah? yeah David yeah. Beckham. If David Beckham eats it, it can't be that bad, right? Well, <laughs> what's interesting is that wherever you go in the world, you find an Italian restaurant, a Thai restaurant, but you never see any English restaurants anywhere. I'm not sure there are any. I can't think of any either. Food sophistication, which is what you need if you're going to charge a price, is absolutely not English. Yeah, maybe. But I was determined to find an English restaurant in London that didn't serve me food that looked like it had already been eaten. And I found one. It's called The English Restaurant. There's just one. Hi. Hello. Kay. There is an English restaurant in London. There is. We are it. <laughs> you are it. You're the only one. <laughs> well, there are a few more. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful. I love it. 
the full English breakfast yeah, is the thing that we sell most of because oh, that's the it's the classic. That's the classic. Well, the it? impression that everyone has is that we eat this all day, every yeah, day. Yeah. Well, we don't. Do How we? often would you eat an English breakfast? Once a year, probably. Once a year. Yeah. See, if everybody was actually getting up and having that in the morning, this whole island would sink. <laughs> I think that's one of our greatest exports. And why do you think it's so good? Oh, because it's great for an hangover. <laughs> I'll be honest, I've never tasted venison pudding before. Okay. It takes hours to cook. I think English cooking is particularly time consuming. Mm. And, you know, you do need to have the skills. And what would you typically have at home? In Indian cookery and things like that. <laughs> so did we ever have uh, the culture of cooking in the UK? If you look hard and far back, you do find there is a strong tradition of quite plain good English food. During, for example, when the French and the English were fighting with Napoleon, the English got the name of roast beef, roast beef. Yeah, because, beef yeah. yeah, because they were so proud of the fact that they had all this beef to eat. <laughs> I've always wondered why my French friends called me le roast beef, and now I know it's because we had a lot of it back in the day. Hopefully at some point, English food will make a comeback. Let's have another look at uh, what the English kitchen has got to offer, because I think there's a lot there that people don't really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we don't have to defend so often is our music. Absolutely. Uh, which is, the next stereotype is that English music is the best in the world. 